out. So you guys are having a great day or evening or morning whenever you're watching this. Uh, today we are starting chapter six. Um, so six one one and six one two are strongly related. Um, this uh, aligns with the practice of statistics, fourth edition, chapter six, uh, section one. Um, and so today we're going to talk about the difference between um, discrete random variables and continuous random variables, uh, what the difference is between them, and also find the mean of a random variable. Um, and then we're going to interpret the mean, not the standard deviation, so we do that in the next video, but interpret the mean of a random variable in context. Um, okay, so random variables. Here's the deal, right? When we're doing probability, we could, I could ask for the sample space, right? Which be, which would be like the list of all possible outcomes of a certain, uh, certain event. Um, I could ask for uh, the probability distribution, which is the sample space and also the probability of each individual event or um, thing happening. So a random variable is a variable you can define it to be X or Y or Z or you know whatever variable um, that basically takes uh, an event that may or may not be um, numerical like heads or tails right um, like flipping a coin and turning it into a variable that is a number that is numerical so for example maybe my uh, chance process or my event is tossing a coin three times um, a variable a random variable might be the number of heads that I get right I could get no heads I could get one head I could get two heads or I could get three heads um, and there's different probabilities for each of those events occurring so um, that's kind of a, you long story short what a random variable is um, so you're gonna have you're gonna see two different types of random variables. Uh, one is a discrete random variable and the other is continuous. And to describe the difference between the two, um, I have some nice pictures down here. Okay, uh, so discrete, we're worried about the zombie apocalypse. So your discrete random variables or discrete numbers are uh, like counting numbers types of things. So for example, um, the number of zombies that are chasing you, whereas a continuous variable would be like the time you have left to live when those zombies are chasing you. Okay, so for these next examples, I had to like search just regular bites and blood because if I searched zombie bites it was like the most disgusting pictures ever so don't do that uh, <laughs> or do so at your own risk anyways uh, so um, another discrete variable might be the number of bites you have from a zombie because you can count them you have one bite two bites three bites four bites zero bites um, but you can't have like half a bite because once you're bitten, you're bitten, and then you're dead. So it doesn't matter. Um, it counts as a bite. Um, and then perhaps uh, a continuous variable would be like the amount of blood loss from said bite. And lastly, um, a discrete variable would be like your shoe size. Um, yes, they come in half sizes, but like it's not a continuous length, like you're the length of your foot is a continuous variable, but the size of the shoe is not. Um, and so that would be your discrete variable. And then because it's important for running zombies, your stride, the length of your stride uh, is continuous. Cool. Okay. So back to the top. Um, a discrete random variable, um, to make it a maybe make it a little simpler, different words for you. Discrete random variable um, is basically uh, a variable that has like a countable number of possible values um, and a continuous random variable, you cannot count them. So it takes on all, basically all, any any number in the world, 
except imaginary numbers, I guess. Um, but any number in in the realm of real numbers um, could your your variable could take on um, any number, not just countable numbers. Okay, so if you have a discrete, so we're only going to talk about discrete random variables today. Um, next one. I, the next video I'll talk about uh, continuous random variables. So um, suppose you have a discrete random variable x um, and it has a mean mu of x and probability and it has a probability distribution. Whoops. Um, so here's your probability distribution. So x1 would be like the first value that your variable could take on. x2 would be the second variable. So like say for example in the I'm tossing heads, I'm tossing um, Oh my god. I'm tossing coins. I'm tired, clearly. I'm tossing coins three times, right? I can get no heads, and the probability of that, there is a certain probability of that. One head, I get a certain probability. Two heads, I get a certain probability. Three heads, I get a certain probability. Um, and so uh, your probability distribution is just kind of listing out like what the possible outcome is, and then the probability of that outcome happening. And then the next outcome and the probability of that happening. So it just, you know, you have all your probabilities there. So um, conditions, it's basic probability rules. So um, each probability has to be between 0 and 1. Um, and then if you add up all of the probabilities within the probabilities distribution, it has to equal 1. So it has to add up to 100%. Um, you can't leave any of the data out, and you can't have over 100% because um, that's not possible. Okay, so your expected value, also known as your mean, um, both are asking the same thing in this particular, um, in when we're talking about discrete random variables, um, I can ask what is the expected value or what is the mean. Um, and that, so. You can write it as the mean, or you can write it as the expected value. Um, and it's pretty simple. You just take each individual um, possible outcome, so x1, and you multiply it by its probability. And then you add it to the next one times its probability, and add it to the next one times its probability. So what that really looks like is x1 times p1 plus x2 times p2 plus x3 times p3 plus dot, dot, dot. And so I'll write that out for you. So you can write it out like that, um, or you can write it in summation notation. Note that this large sigma, capital sigma, this large E looking thing, um, it just means the sum of. So this just means the sum of x, each of the x's times their probabilities. So same thing as that. Okay, example one. There's only one example. So go ahead, try it. Um, we have, we're defining the random variable x to be the number of goals scored by a randomly selected team of randomly selected, selected game. Um, and so the table below shows the probability distribution for x, okay? Um, so this just means that the probability of getting no goals is 0.061. The probability of that team getting one goal is 0.154, and so on, okay? So go ahead, compute and interpret the mean of the random variable x. And then the second question says, find and interpret uh, the probability that x is less than 1 in context. Okay, so go ahead, try that. Okay, so here's the solutions for you. Um, the mean is 0 times 0.061 plus 1 times 0.154 plus 2 times 0.228 plus all the way down to 9 times 0.001. Um, so... Uh, is your answer is your expected value is 2.851 and so your the way you interpret it in context um, is that you say something like you know we expect a randomly selected team to get about 2.851 goals um, so that brings me to my oopsies um, because expected values are long-term behavior it's long-run behavior um, and so a lot of times um, students think that an expected value has to be um, one of the numbers that they already gave you, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, um, and so they'd round that to three goals. Um, but that's actually not the case because it is long-run behavior, and so um, 
you actually don't want to round your expected value, okay? Um, and uh, B is find and interpret the probability that X is less than one in context. Um, the probability that X is less than one is the probability of the team getting less than one goal um, or no goals. Um, it's the same thing, okay? Um, and the probability of that happening is uh, just that 0.061. Um, I'll show you how to do this in your calculator as well. Um, if you want to do, if you do this in your calculator, you need to remember two things. One is you still need to show your work, okay? But showing your work could be doing the first two plus dot dot dot, and then plus the nine, and ten, and then plus the last one. So you could skip writing out all of them um, if you did it in your calculator. Um, uh, and the other thing is, if you actually use the, the stat mode, um, you need to be sure that any other time, so if you change it, I'll show you, never mind, just ignore my words right now. Um, okay, so here's how you do it. You go into stat, you go into edit, okay, um, and then in one of the lists, so in L1, you list all of your possible values of x of your random variable. And then in list two, you list your probabilities, okay? And then when you, so normally when we get our mean, we go into stat and calc. We do one bar stats, so all that's the same. The only thing that's different is that normally, okay, your list is populated by whatever list has your information in it. Um, and you leave the frequency list blank. But in this case, your frequency list is the list of the probabilities. So you're basically telling the calculator, hey, list one is my outcome, and the second list, L2, is um, the probability of each of those things occurring. And so it actually does everything for you. So you end up getting your mean, 2.851. You get your uh, sigma as well, and you know um, the other values from. Okay, that's it. Hope you have a great day. Bye.